G'day GDL peoples, we continue the series on creating an automatic fall label that reads the roof pitch of the roof it's attached to. In this session I'll show you how to turn on the opaque fill, the label frame, and how to account for the label margin. This requires figuring out how wide and how high your text string is, which also needs to account for the font type and font size, and also responds to the scale. I also cover how to define a fill in line in your code without having to use a parameter and a good use case for the global modified parameter variable. This is some really handy stuff that can make your objects take the extra step to being user friendly. So I've got a roof, slab and ramp. Let's open that up. Restore down. I'll just activate my work environment for GDL editing, which turns on my Edit GDL Library Parts toolbar. So the first one is background fill. In labels, as part of their functionality, you can turn on opaque here and set the pen. Or on your info bar, turn it on here. That is this parameter here, AC B label opaque fill. And we've also got the pen, which is what you see here, AC label text background pen. So I'll put it down here. And what do we say? We go if. Now, unfortunately, because these are locked, I can't copy these. So I have to repeat them, write them out. AC. Now, what I'm saying here equals one. If ACB label opaque fill equals one, because one is true, zero is false. But I can get rid of that because the statement, if ACB label opaque fill, it will automatically test if it's one or zero. And what do we want to do? We want to go poly 2B. We'll have four coordinate lines. Our frame fill will be one plus two plus four. Our fill pen, because it's an empty fill, we can make this anything we want, so we'll just make it one. And the fill background pen will be this one here. So what are our coordinates going to be? Don't know yet. That's interesting. At the moment, let's just do something dodgy so that you can see how it works. So that's 200 by uh, 700. So let's just start at zero, zero, so we can see what's going on. And then across to 700 and still at 700 and back to zero, but at 200. Oops, this needs to be 200. There we go. Now the trailing zeros aren't necessary. I put them in because it's easier to read as meters. Right, so let's turn on our background fill here. There we go. Look at that. So what I want to do is add to get it back to the starting point, del one. Okay. Well, that kind of works, but what happens when I change my scale? That's not working at all. So I need to be able to read the size of this text in order to put this background fill in. Let's change it to something we can see. So that's not working. So even though I've got it on a nice visible pen, nothing's there. And that's because I haven't set my fill. So I'll come up the top here and I'll set my pen as well. There we go, that's better. So what have I done here? Because I don't want to have to set up another parameter defining my background fill, because there's none here, I've just defined an empty fill, which is a command that you can use. Here it is, define empty fill, and just give it a name. That way the user doesn't have to worry about setting a fill. I don't have to worry about the label jumping from project to project using different attributes. I can just set an empty fill and be done with it. And now this is working. Got my background fill, which responds to my pen selection. Good. Now I need to set the size. There's two commands you use for this. One is a request, requesting the height of the style. We'll talk about that in a minute. And the other one 
is STW, which is string width, which will give you the width of your string. So let's have a look at that. So first of all, let's figure out the height of our style. You can only find out the height of your style once you've defined it. So we define our style up here and you can only find out the width of your text string after you've filled your text string. So we'll do it down here right before we draw our label and it's a request. And this is it here, request height of style, name, height, and we won't worry about descent or leading. So this returns the height of the style in millimeters, but because we work in meters, we need to divide that by 1000 and then multiply it by our global scale. What does that look like? So we go N, so the name is text style. Oh, what's going on here? We don't need that. And the height will be. So that's just a variable I made up there. So that will return the height of my text style. So then I'll use a variable. So that'll give me my height. Let's swap out that. Right, so there's the height of my textile. So now if I change my scale, see the height has changed to update to stay in line with my text. Good. So now we just do the same for our width. And what was it? Expressions and functions, functions, right down the bottom, string width. Again, we'll return it in millimeters. And what's my string expression? All note. So let's swap that out. I'll just change this minus width. Okie dokie. Whoops, need to sort that one out. So what I want to do is if it's a ramp, so full type is a ramp then I want to add the correct distance to get my cursor to the middle of the line. And we will only need to delete something if it's a ramp. So I'll add this at the bottom. There it is. Let's just change that pen. The next thing to deal with is this margin text contour offset. So if I change that, it's like this, if I change that to one, I would expect that background fill to expand to suit. So I've just placed a text element here, turned on the background and the frame so that I can make sure that I get my behavior right. If I change that offset to zero, that's what it will look like. So let's change it to one. So that's what I want it to look like. If I make this one. Now the parameter we are after is a fixed name parameter, which is AC label frame offset here. And you can see it's a length type parameter. It should be a real number, but that's okay. We can work with that length type parameter. And so what I will do is I'll plug that into my width here. So we've got our width, which is our string width and we'll add in our label frame offset. We'll multiply that by our global scale. We'll divide that by a thousand because we want to change our length parameter to a meters and then that happens at each end. So it'll be by two. I'll just put that in brackets, not necessary, but just makes it clear what we're dealing with. So we'll save that. We can see that it lines up. Good. If I make that 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Good. It's working. But we can change this a bit. We've got 2 divided by 1,000 by global scale. So we can get rid of that and we can put it in here. That will then now all need to be in brackets. Good. Good. 
So now we just add the same to here. Righto. Need to adjust that so it clearly goes in the center. So I've just added in a variable here, which just gives me this figure adjusted for the scale. And then in here I can go There we go. No, that's still wrong. It shouldn't be by two, it should just be one. And that, I'll just change this, make it a little bit neater, and I'll put in a add two. Okay, that's better. That's working better. Good. Now the next thing is this border. I want that to respond to my text frame enable and disable. That parameter is this one here, ACB label frame. So because that's a Boolean parameter, its value will be zero for off, one for on. So I can just exchange this status code. So for a poly 2B, one will be draw the line, zero will be don't draw the line. So I'll be going oh, B label frame. And there it is, not drawing the frame drawing the frame good that's working okie doke that's that part sorted out let's work on the negative value so if this is minus one percent i don't want a minus here so we deal with that by using the abs command what is the ABS command, I hear you ask? So I search in the PDF for ABS. I find it a lot quicker searching in the PDF than online. That's my preference. So it's a function, arithmetical function. So online it would be function, arithmetical function, ABS returns the absolute value. So basically that just means it gets rid of your negative stuff. It makes it all positive. So ABS roof pitch. String oh, I won't be putting it in here. I'll put it here. ABS roof angle. Right. Okay, that's now returning positive. Good. Whether it's negative or positive, it will always read correctly here. That's good. I want to put ramp. In this one, so that happens under here, which is ramp, full note equals ramp space plus the rest. Good, ramp. Let's just change these to something sensible. Now I need to test to see if it's an unattached label. So if I turn this into an independent label, I get an error and the reason for that is it can't find the information that's required so i need to test for that error check for that and what we want to test for is called the global element type glob element type which is a global parameter used with labels and we can see here zero is none it's an individual label you can also see the different types here so we basically only want our label to operate if it's a roof. So what we'll do is we'll set up some constants. I could just put in the number. You know, I could just test for zero or test for eight. But when I come back and read my script, that won't make sense to me. So I want to put in some constants in English so that it makes sense to me. So I'll just copy from a previous script I've done. There we go. So values for global element type. Zero is none, roof is eight. So now I can use these constants instead of a number. 
So how do I want my label to behave? If it's an independent label, I'm just going to turn this all around because it's annoying me at the moment. Let's turn them like that, get rid of that. So if it's an independent label, I want to be able to manually put in this info. I also want to be able to turn on and off either the fall or the text. So what I'll do is I'll create a couple more parameters. What am I going to call it? So I'll have these both on as a default. Roof is my default. I don't want my dimension B, so I'll hide that. So under here, I will go if, if global element type equals rough. I want these to be in there. So I don't want that calculation to happen. So I've also got to say full note equals nothing. So we've got to prime it before we start adding our conditional statements. If, if we've got our angle turned on, then our full note will equal the angle. And if text on, full note equals full note plus full. So the reason I've got this up here is if neither of these are true, then full note will not have been declared anywhere and I'll get an error. So let's just demonstrate that. Turn both of these off. Check script. It's uninitialized variable because I use full note later on. So it actually has to have something in it to work. But if I say that and check my script, it's OK. So that's why that is. Let's turn those on. Now I do need to do one more test because I need a space in here, but only if the angle is on. So I need to do one more test in here. So if add a space and then I can add the fall to it. So that way, if the angle is not on, I don't get a, a leading space, which will put my fall off center in my arrow. So there we go. Right, so I've got an error down here. So I need to declare my roof pitch as nothing and my roof gradient as nothing. Make sure I don't get errors. 39. Right. There we go. Okay. One to zero fall. I want to error handle that out of there. But first of all, let's just check my text is working. Custom settings. Turn off my show angle. Oops, wasn't working on that one. It was the roof one. It's the roof one I did it on. Show angle. Good, so I've just got a fall. I can turn that one off too. <laughs> it's just an arrow. And I can show angle 0 0.06. Okay, well, if that's only showing one or the other, I could probably make that arrow shorter, right? So that's arrow length is here. So I could test, and I could say if angle on is true and text on is true then arrow length is 0.18 by global scale else is i don't know let's go 0.12 by global scale that's better now do i want the scenario where both selections are off no, I don't. So under parameter script, the parameter script will run multiple times to prevent multiple calculations happening and slowing down your script. There's something that you can add, a little bit of code you can add. We'll create something called, it's a variable, that's ours. It's a variable, that's ours. So there's something called application query, which is like a request and it goes and asks what's happening in the application. And what we're after is this one here. First occasion in progress. So this command returns whether the current run is the first run of our parameter script. So that's what we want.
So that's called a flag. It's just set to one or zero. And globe mob par name returns the name of the parameter that's just been changed. Global modified parameter name, and it returns a string. So down here, we will say mod par name equals. So if angle on, so if we are turning this off, and this is already off, we want text to go back on. So if if not angle on and not text on, then parameters equals one. So this needs to be in inverted commas. Let's try that, that's better. So let's see what happens. Turn off that and let's turn off that. That should turn back on and it does. So let's do the same thing for my text. If mob par name equals text on, then let's try that. Good, so I can't turn them both off. Mm, excellent, it's working. Good, 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 good. Arrow gets bigger, turn off opaque, all working as it should be. Excellent. So that's that part. So I'll take this out of here and put it up here. Shift tab to reduce the indent. So if it's a ramp, then we'll go if the angle's on. Actually, up here, I'll just put this on the one line, make it a little bit easier to read, tighten the code a little bit. By the way, that's not me jumping around. That's the new GDL editor deciding where it wants me to look at the screen, deciding where it wants my cursor to go. So if the angle's on, then the fall note equals that. So under here, if the angle note, if angle's on, then the fall note. Ah, so in this case, the ramp is first, so I want text is on, then all note equals ramp. Okay, good. If the angle is on, then if the text is on, then full note equals full note plus, plus space. And full note equals full note plus. So it's for my ramp. All right, I'm missing an end if, full note ramp, end if, if, then, that, if, and, oh, down here. Ramp is good. Let's change that to just ramp. Or I could change it to just that. Good. And if I made it finish this last one. So if it's a slab, it's this one here. So if the angle's on, if the text is on, if the angle's on, then I want to add that. If the text is on and the angle's on, I want to add a space. And then I want to add plus no space, same as that one. All right, there it is. Test it. Good. 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 Oakley dokely. My thinking is a bit wrong because if I change this text to be quite large, that arrow is now wrong. But this is for me, not for worldwide distribution. And I always use that text size. So for now, that will do. Well, let's stop there. Next up, the final installment, where I script the calipers type symbol used in section and elevation and show you how to automatically detect the view you're in using the global context command.
I also script the unattached version of the label. We're nearly there.